Hi class, Dr. Lindner. Let's take a look at the adrenal glands. When we look at the word adrenal, we see renal. Renal means kidney. Add means you're adding something to the kidney. Sometimes it's called suprarenal. Supra means above. And you'll see that the adrenals are just above both kidneys. So adrenal or suprarenal. When we look at the adrenals, we're going to see, and as a, when we cut it open, we'll see that we have two sections to it. We have an adrenal cortex and an adrenal medulla. Cortex, remember, means bark, the bark of a tree. So it's the outermost layer. And the adrenal medulla is the innermost layer. Now, histologically, the adrenal cortex has several layers to it, which we will go over. But the adrenal cortex, the outer part, remember, makes glucocorticoids. And we have mineral corticoids. Glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids. The inner part, which is the adrenal medulla, that's going to make your norepinephrine and your epinephrine. So let's take a look at the adrenal cortex, and we'll look at it histologically. So look in the middle here. We're going to focus on the adrenal cortex, and there's three zones, the zona glomerulosa, the zona fasciculata, and the zona reticularis. Okay, this is outermost, and this is deeper. So one is more superficial. And then we're moving in deeper and deeper. So we look off to the right. We see the adrenal cortex right here. And then we'll see one, two, the three layers. The zona glomerulosa, which is the more superficial part, that's going to secrete your mineral corticoid. What's the main mineral corticoid? It's called aldosterone. And the mineral is sodium that it's involved in regulating. When we go deeper, that's the zona fasciculata, that's gonna secrete glucocorticoids. That's cortisone, cortisol, corticosterone. And then when we move a little bit deeper, number three, that's the zona reticularis, that's the androgens, like testosterone. Once we're past that, now you're in the inner portion, which is the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla, that's going to secrete your norepinephrine, your epinephrine. So the zona glomerulosa secretes your mineral corticoids. That's going to regulate minerals. That's aldosterone. That's aldosterone. And then the zona fasciculata secretes the glucocorticoids we're thinking primarily cortisol and then the zona reticularis androgens primarily testosterone now aldosterone that's the major mineral corticoid that's secreted by the adrenal gland it's going to regulate sodium and potassium remember sodium potassium they work together if the sodium potassium pump, uh, one goes in the cell, the other's leaving the cell. They kind of work in opposite directions. If you hold on to one, you're getting rid of the other. Okay. So we're going to talk about aldosterone in this system that's called the RAS system, which is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Okay. The RAS. Now, renin, if we look at the word, first three letters, ren, that's from renal. So there's going to be some kidney function here. We're going to see some kidney correlation with renin. Angiotensin, well, we see tensin, sounds like tension. And angio, if someone's having an angiogram or angioplasty, angio relates to your blood vessels. All right, so we've got kidneys, we got blood vessel tension and aldosterone, which we know is sodium related.
All right. So kidney, blood vessel tension. When I'm thinking blood vessel tension, what comes to mind is your blood pressure. Blood pressure. So let's take a look. Let me use red here. Make it a little bit easier to see for us. So we have some sort of condition where we're starting out with decreased blood pressure. We got decreased blood pressure. And the end result of this entire mapping system here is that we're trying to increase blood pressure. How do we do that? All right. So let's remember some basic concepts wherever we have minerals there's going to be water that follows water and minerals go together um vasodilation versus vasoconstriction okay i know i write horrible it's like chicken scratch it's it's official doctor handwriting i know i know i know um so Vasodilation, if we look at a cross section of a blood vessel, it's nice and open. And if we look at vasoconstriction, it's the lumen is smaller. So in vasoconstriction, you're going to have high blood pressure. And in vasodilation, it's going to be lower blood pressure. Okay. Um, other things, uh, cortisol, with cortisol, you're going to have high blood pressure, right? When you're under stress, your blood pressure goes up. Cortisol is released in response to stress. Um, Anti-diuretic hormone, if you're holding on to water, you hold on to minerals, that's going to increase blood pressure right, with ADH and aldosterone, which is a mineral corticoid. If you hold on to sodium, you're going to hold on to water. That's going to increase blood pressure, right? Just some basic concepts here, okay? So we have something that has created an environment where we have decreased blood pressure. What could do it? Uh, maybe you're dehydrated, maybe you're hemorrhaging and losing blood, or maybe you're sodium deficient. If you're sodium deficient or you're dehydrated, you have decreased water, decreased sodium, you have decreased blood volume. If there's less blood volume, there's less blood pressure. Now, we don't want low blood pressure going through the kidneys. The kidneys are a pump. It always needs fluid going through it otherwise the motor burns out so the decreased blood pressure goes into the kidneys and the kidneys are going hey we got to increase pressure somehow so the kidneys release renin look at the first three letters of renin ren from renal so the kidneys release renin the liver is releasing angiotensinogen. Now, anything that ends in OGIN means it's inactive. It's inactive and has to be activated. Whether it's, angio, whether it's angiotensinogen, pepsinogen, glycogen, anything with OGIN means it's inactive. And the body has to find a way to activate it. So the liver is making some precursor, angiotensinogen, angio is blood vessel tension. This is going to be involved in regulating blood pressure, but it's inactivated until renin hits it. So renin from the kidney bumps into angiotensinogen. It's going to knock off the OGIN and gives us something called angiotensin 1. Now, if there's an angiotensin 1, it's probably safe to assume that there's going to be an angiotensin 2. Well, how does angiotensin 1 become angiotensin 2? Well, here's where our good friend the lungs come into play. Who would have thought that the liver and the lungs are involved in blood pressure? Well, 
they are. So angiotensin one goes through the lungs. The lungs make this enzyme called ACE. What is ACE? ACE is angiotensin converting enzyme. What is angiotensin converting enzyme going to convert? It's going to convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Brilliant. And angiotensin 2 has incredible function. Angiotensin 2 has a lot of important things to do. It is going to constrict your blood vessels. And if you constrict your blood vessels, blood pressure goes up. What else is angiotensin II going to do? It's going to be involved in releasing and stimulating antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone, holding on to sodium. I'm sorry, holding on to water, antidiuretic. If you hold on to water, you hold on to minerals, again, that's going to increase blood pressure. What else is angiotensin II going to do? It's going to stimulate aldosterone release. What's aldosterone going to do? It's going to hold on to sodium. If you hold on to sodium, you hold on to water, that too will increase blood pressure. What else does angiotensin II do? It's going to give you salt cravings. Mm, I am just need something salty. I need potato chips. I need pretzels. So it gives you salt cravings and it's going to make you thirsty. That's what angiotensin II does. So watch. It's going to increase your salt cravings. And once you have salt, aldosterone holds on to the salt. It holds on to the sodium. Then you get thirsty after eating something salty and the water that you drink you hold on to because of antidiuretic hormone. So you see how beautiful all this innately works together? So all of this is going to have a um, end result in increasing blood pressure. How cool is that? Now, still on the adrenal glands. I'm going to pause and then I'll come back here and talk a little bit more about the adrenals, but in stress and in how stress kills.